Good evening to Europe, good morning to Asia, and good afternoon to those all across the Fruited Plains. You are tuned in to the global leader in truth and educational radio programming, Republic Broadcasting Network, and you're now locked into the worldwide 20 megabit beacon of truth, hope, and justice, otherwise known as your weekly dose of the Crimson Pill. I, your host, the great and all-powerful Antonin Fiore. Hey, just make sure you don't peek behind the curtain, folks. Encourage you to unfasten your seatbelts and turn on all portable electronic devices as we embark on this week's voyage of the USS Crimson Pill. In the event of turbulence, the captain reminds you that your biological seat cushion is no substitute for an open mind. If you're seated in an exit row, you are now invited to move forward to our first class cabin of truth at any time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, our Saturday, July 30th, 2011 edition of the Crimson Pill. I am your host, Antonin Fiore, and for lack of a better set of phrasing, I think I'm calling today's show the Schizophrenia Show, because I have a multitude of topics that come from a, a kaleidoscope of aspects of life as we face it today. Uh, whether you're here in America or anywhere around the world, folks, we are in the middle of living out the Chinese proverb, may you live in interesting times. And it's not just a proverb, folks, it's actually more of a curse. And that, that's where we find ourselves, the condition and our situation. Now, I, I've mentioned, folks, that I have a, a tremendous variety of material to cover today, and I would like to be able to take uh, listener phone calls a bit later in the program. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll urge you or caution you. It's probably going to be a minimum of 20 minutes before we're able to take the first call. Um, I wanted to uh, begin by talking a little bit about the, uh, the, the scientific uh, technocracy that we face. Uh, in the last week uh, to week and a half, we've heard uh, the headlines come out, the story uh, originating out of uh, the United Kingdom, 150 human-animal hybrids grown in U.K. labs Embryos have been produced secretively for the past three years. I'm going to be quoting from this article, which was uh, published uh, originally in the, uh, the Daily Mail, uh, a U.K. Uh, publication website. Uh, it's written by Daniel Martin and Simon Caldwell. The date is July 22, 2011. I think some folks in our listening audience have uh, heard a bit about this story, but for others it might be new to you. So buckle your seatbelts. Here we go. I'm reading from the article. Scientists have created more than 150 human-animal hybrid embryos in British laboratories. The hybrids have been produced secretively over the past three years by researchers looking into possible cures for a wide range of diseases. The revelation comes just a day after a committee of scientists warned of a nightmare, quote, planet of the apes, unquote, scenario in which work on human-animal creations goes too far. I'm going to skip uh, forward just a little bit in the story. Uh, figures seen by the Daily Mail show that 155, quote, admixed embryos containing both human and animal genetic material have been created since the in introduction of the 2008 Human Fertilization Embryology Act, a piece of legislation that was designed to uh, place controls upon this very line of research. And since that time, more than 155 have been created. I'll continue now from the article. This legalized the creation of a variety of hybrids, including an animal egg fertilized by a human sperm, which they call cybrids, with C-Y, cybrids, in which a human nucleus is implanted into an animal cell, and chimeras, uh, C-H-I-M-E-R-A-S, chimeras, in which human cells are mixed with animal embryos. Now, what do the scientists have to say about this? Well, they say that these techniques can be used to develop embryonic stem cells, which can then be used to treat a range of incurable illnesses. They always sell it with a promise, don't they, folks? Well, please stick with us, because when we come back, we're going to talk about how maybe the only possible beneficial use of this type of technology would be to replace our members of the House and the Senate so that we can actually get something accomplished. Your, your host is jesting, of course. Folks, please listen to these messages from our sponsors. Support our sponsors. We'll see you in just a moment. And ladies and gentlemen of the RBN listening audience, welcome back to today's episode of The Crimson Pill. I'm calling today's show the Schizophrenia Show because I have so much news to cover. We've started by talking about these human-animal hybrids out of the U.K. We have some other uh, science news, uh, science technocracy news to cover with you. 
the things, the uh, research and the, the development that the uh, elites are using, the New World Order is using, to further our control grid and our imprisonment in their system. Uh, but we're going to be talking about the quote-unquote debt ceiling debate and some of the uh, inside and outside of uh, that uh, circus of, uh, of drama. We're also going to turn our attention back to our old friends at NASA, and we have an update to make for you about uh, Comet Elenin, some of the uh, occurrings and happenings coming up on us very quickly in that avenue as well, and, and a whole other host of material, another three or four inches of, of uh, research and documentation that I would love to be able to cover in our brief hour today. But to continue from uh, our investigation of these human-animal hybrids, uh, according to the article, the research at the three labs that had been conducting this, uh, uh, this uh, chain of experimentation on the embryos, according to the uh, article, all have now stopped creating these embryos due to a lack of funding. But scientists believe that there will be more such work in the future. Now, uh, first of all, have they stopped that research? Of course not, folks. That's the, uh, that's the outward claim. That's for the uninitiated. Uh, and as we'll find out a bit later here, this this is only the research that was happening in these three laboratories in the UK. Uh, we'll talk more about what's happening all around the world. Now, the figure uh, and this information contained in the article was revealed to crossbench peer Lord Alton following a parliamentary question. Uh, last night he said, and this again is about 10 days old, I argued in Parliament against the creation of human-animal hybrids as a matter of principle. None of the scientists who appeared before us could give us any justification in terms of treatment. Ethically, it can never be justifiable. It discredits us as a country. It is dabbling in the grotesque. I fully agree with you, Lord Alton. Haven't met you before, but I'd love to shake your hand. He continues to say, at every stage, the justification from scientists has been, if only you allow us to do this, we will find cures for every illness known to mankind. This is emotional blackmail. Once again, I fully concur, Lord Alton, and I appreciate you having fortitude to say this in, uh, in Parliament. Uh, as I continue from the article, we now turn to Josephine Quintavale or Quintavalle of, of pro-life comment on reproductive ethics, who said, I am aghast that this is going on and we didn't know anything about it. Why have they kept this a secret? If they are proud of what they're doing, why do we need to ask parliamentary questions in order for this to come to light? Very well said. Quite right. Why indeed? Well, they've kept it a secret because they know what the public's reaction would be, the hue, the cry from the public. But now I want to continue forward to one of the proponents of this research, the lead author of uh, the report, Professor Robin Lovell Badge from the Medical Research Council's National Institute for medical research, who said uh, the scientists were not concerned about human-animal hybrid embryos because, by law, these have to be destroyed within 14 days. Wow. He's providing his uh, ethical justification for this because these embryos are aborted. Basically, they are murdered within 14 days of conception. How about that, Mr. Uh, Lovell Badge? Uh, Wow, that's your idea of ethics. I, uh, I just can't even think of the words to string together to say to you right now, sir. He continued, the reason for doing these experiments is to understand more about early human development and come up with ways of curing serious diseases. And as a scientist, I feel there is a moral imperative to pursue this research. Sir, a moral imperative to pursue it? You have no moral compass to begin with, my friend, and how dare you say that there's a moral imperative to pursue it when your concept of justifying why it's okay is because those fetuses, those embryos, are murdered. They're destroyed within 14 days. Good night. As long as we have sufficient controls, he says, as we do in this country, we should be proud of the research. My God, I don't even know how to phrase to you folks what I'm feeling inside as I hear this kind of drivel from this guy. Human-animal hybrids are also created in other countries, many of which have little or no regulation. Well, that's just the crux of it, isn't it, folks? Because these very laboratories that they talked about and the funding where the funding is actually coming from is coming from international corporations, from multinational corporations that are able to conduct this research with no light of day whatsoever shed on their behaviors and their activities. They're able to do it in the four corners of the world where we know that they have uh, conducted other heinous, heinous lines of pursuit and research as well. Now, folks, I, again, I, I am attempting to get to the four corners of news as we know it in the one-hour program today. 
So I need to move forward. But as we take your phone calls in the second half of the show, uh, feel free to uh, uh, to uh, invite us to turn our attention back to any of these pieces, but I'm going to try to move through them rather expeditiously at this time. Uh, in this article from uh, AFB, Associated or yeah, American or Associated Free Press, uh, from uh, last month, the headline reads, Argentine lab clones cow to produce human-like milk. An Argentine laboratory announced that it had created the world's first transgenic cow using human genes that will allow the animal to produce the equivalent of mother's milk. The cloned cow named Rosita ISA is the first bovine born in the world that incorporates human genes that contain the proteins present in human milk. Argentina's National Institute of Agribusiness Technology said in a statement on Thursday, uh, Rosita was born by cesarean section because she weighed more than 99 pounds, about twice the normal weight of Jersey cows. Huh, any connection there possibly to the genetic distortions that they've made to this beast? As an adult, the cow will produce milk that is similar to humans, the statement said. Now get this, here's the quote. Our goal was to raise the nutritional value of cow's milk by adding two human genes. 